Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a binder num notebook that accompanies this uh, Stanford Geothermal Workshop paper. So here's the paper, and you can find it online. And in the bottom of it, there is a binder notebook. So you should go here, uh, copy and paste it, and then ta -da! go here and uh, just put inside your browser if you... I've checked it out in Firefox, Chrome, they both work, so you put it in, it'll take some time to open up, you can see here the process, okay, so it's already happening, great, and this is called a Jupyter Notebook, and uh, the way it works is that you run different cells in this notebook by either clicking here on run, so it's running these, and because they're just text cells, it doesn't really take much, or you could click shift enter. So I just didn't click run, I did shift enter on the keyboard and it is running the cell which is importing some packages. And when the cell is running, this is like a little star and when it's when it's not, it's a number. Um, so I'm clicking again, shift enter, shift enter, uh, and shift enter here. So after I click shift enter here, I don't need to click on anything else, I just go here and this is where we can look at 3D models uh, from the paper. So you go here, you choose a scenario. Um, I kind of recommend to use the low or medium resolution just so things run quickly. So here I'm just going to show an example of visualizing the, a low resolution version of the first scenario. So here you see it's running this. So just by clicking this button, this started running. So I don't have to um, click anything else. So I'm just going to wait here for a little bit. It says it's finished calculating the model, how long it took. Number of cells in this uh, very rough model, the first scenario, converting to VTK, and it should be opening up anytime soon. All right, so we have here a pretty low resolution model where we can see all the faulting really nicely. Great. And um, you can control here different things, like for example, this is uh, the um, opacity, and you can go here and click on different elements and you know cause make them disappear. Uh, yeah, basically you can change things colors as you so desired. Huh. Well, maybe this is something that's not there anymore. Oh, there you go. Okay, so that's the first thing. Next one is to look at the realizations uh, that are generated. That um, you can generate in each scenario. So, for example, you can go here. I just clicked Shift Enter and choose a scenario. This time, let's go with scenario two. And because we want this to run kind of quickly, I'm going to go and click here on low resolution. And I'm going to click on run. Okay. And the first thing that we see here is the uh, structural uncertainty table, which shows the different parameters. What is the range of uncertainty for that parameter? So, for example, for the first layer, uh, its density um, is uh, Gaussian, uh, has a Gaussian distribution, has the values uh, between, well, here it's a Gaussian, so this is the mean, and this is. Uh, the standard deviation. Okay, and so other ones that's a uniform, so it'd be a uh, you know range between uh, two values. Now this has started running. I think it's already done two of the realizations, but because I don't want us to be uh, waiting here, I've actually already ran this on a separate notebook. Right. So uh, what we see here is different realizations, and this is the uh, the gravity data of the different realizations. Uh, what we see here, a bit lower, is uh, this east-west section, and here we see a north-south uh, section of the realizations, and this is a depth section uh, through the center of the model. So all these just go like this, for example, east-west, uh, south-north, and uh, in the center in terms of the z of the model. Okay, so right now uh, you can this gives you a little bit more detail about Pinati, so you can run this, and then you get here just a, you know a sample, uh, a a sample model that's just very basic. We kind of see this, you know normal faulting uh, st structure, and we can also see the uh, the well some well bores uh, inside and the lithology of the well bores. You can also query uh, the model and get some information about it. What is the extent? How many cells? What is the cell width? And you can also change around the model parameters. So this is something you, you can do manually here if you wanted to, again, run this. You could change the parameters and then click Run. So for example, based on that model, one of the faults was just moved to rotate in this direction. And then it has this uh, east-west 
uh, dip direction um, or azimuth direction. You can also then make 2D plots. And you can calculate the gravity for that model, which we can see here, that kind of uh, new and changed model with the uh, east-west azimuth. Then you can extract uh, the topology at the, you know, out, out of this topology cube, uh, which you can uh, then use to um, compare to the real topology data collected in the lumbar. Well, I think that's basically it. Uh, a quick overview of how this notebook works. Uh, I hope you enjoy using it.